I'm Lee. I'm a community scientist with BioWest. Welcome to our lesson. Uh, I'm calling in today from Babylon Lawn Island. Um, I'm Matilda, and I'm calling in from New York. I'm Sava, and I'm calling in from New York. I'm Grayson. I'm calling in from Grand Lake, Michigan. Welcome, everyone. So today, I would like to go straight into a view of our microscope. And if everybody has their pencil and paper, I would love for us to catch what we're about to see and describe. All right. Here is the worm cam. <gasps> what do we notice about this worm? It's like getting bigger and smaller. And it, it looks like it's bringing uh, like probably blood around its body. Can we see that? What's going on there? That's actually a teeny tiny worm. Really? Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I can see that. Uh -huh. Oh, it's like a baby worm. Like a baby worm. So there's actually multiple sizes and multiple species of worms. And they like kind of weird though. It's like weird. they all look the same to me. I'll have very similar body plans. What are worms the best on the planet at doing? Do Why do they have that body plan? Hmm? Digging? Okay, digging. What else? Yeah, I mean, uh, squirming. Maybe. Squirming? Yep. Making things. Okay. What kinds of things do worms make? They can like they can dig holes underground, probably make themselves a home. Okay, hey, so worms are constantly digging underground. You you dig out back any kind of beautiful, recently wet dirt and you'll find worms. And what they are doing is actually eating. And what happens when you eat? You, you become bigger. Really you become bigger. And what else, Grayson? You poop. You poop. So worm poop is a little bit what makes the world uh, go, go round, you might say. But actually what it does is it allows us to have very rich, rich, nutrient rich soil. Right? Did you see that other little creature crawl through the frame? What was that? It so, looked like it was attacking it. It did kind of look like it's attacking it. But they actually probably live in harmony in their underground ecosystem. Oh, well, we can watch. Seems to check it out and then, and then run away. So the worm is one of the most important creatures that we find in soil. But I would love to direct our attention to the soil itself. What do we notice about that? I mean, how often do you get to look at dirt this close? What do we notice about the dirt? It kind of like, looks, uh, like, tardy -ish. Is that a dead bug? <laughs> is it dead or is it moving? It looks like shriveled up and, like, black. <laughs> uh-huh. It does look shriveled. Oh, you think the, the, the black part is actually maybe a, a dead bug, right? Yeah. What if I told you that it, it definitely could be a dead bug, but it maybe is a dead bug that was eaten or broken down by other things in the soil or maybe then eaten by a worm and pooped out? Yeah. So, yesterday, well, we kind of did an um, observation and we saw a dead bird and we thought that it must, it was a baby. And we thought it must have fallen out of its nest from the top of the tree because it was like right next to the tree. And Whoa. it wasn't there for much long because it wasn't like covered in bugs. Okay. So, like, yeah. So that's how nature deals with death, right? Sort of breaks it down. So we don't have dead birds lying everywhere. We don't have giant trees that are just sort of like every time they fall, right? In the forest, you know, they, there's, there's organisms that break all that stuff down. Those things are yeah. called decomposers. And we actually harness the power of decomposition, worms and what they're doing, eating, eating, the, eating through the soil, eating organic material, and then pooping out very nutrient rich soil. We use that in agriculture. Does everybody know the word agriculture? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's sort of like a long word for farming, all right? If you, have ever grown plants? Raise your hand. 
If you've ever eaten a plant, raise your hand. But have you known what part of the plant you are eating? I wonder. Should we do a quick quiz? Ooh, I love that. What is that? A bad apple. It's, it's like a bad apple? Mushy. Yep, a little bit mushy. Can you see that? It's like... Mm -hmm. So yeah. what part in this diagram is that bad apple? Uh, like at the bottom part, wait, wait. Fruit. Fruit. Yes. All right. Ooh, I have another mm -hmm. one. Okay. Bark. Ooh, bark. So that's like the, the pencil. Pencils are made out of the wood of a tree, right? Yeah. What about this? Wait, what is that? Well, it's a good. What do you think? Oh, is it a vegetable? Okay, Savion guessed celery. Does anybody else know? Typically, <gasps> don't eat. oh, oh, oh! I actually, I actually thought you was gonna eat it. You actually thought I was gonna eat it. Yeah. It smells very oniony. Ooh, I know this one. What is it? What do you think? I know this. I've done tons of cooking classes, and I know what it is. Okay, then tell us. What do you think it is? You guys can try to see. Okay, Savion, you look ready to say something. What do you think? Wait, is it like a green onion? Yes, it's a green onion. Nice. And what part of the, the plant power of the brain. do we eat of the green onion, Matilda? Maybe um, that's a slightly more subtle. Um, usually, um, you go from the white bottom to the top before it gets into the leaves. Cause, okay. But you can, I think you can use the leaves, but I usually don't. So what part are we actually using? Like the root? Yeah. We're kind of, well, we're kind of using part of the root. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Avocado. Avocado. What well, is, isn't that the one. fruit, though? Okay, it's a fruit. And what is that thing in the middle? It's seed. It's a seed. So if I was going to try and grow an avocado plant, how would I do it? Would I just, like, put this whole thing in the soil? You'd take it out. You should clean it first, and then you'd put it in the ground. Okay. So I take this, I clean it first, and then put it in the ground. All right. Mm -hmm. That is one strategy. Just drop it right in the soil. Would I pick what kind of soil would I pick? Avocado soil. Yeah, we'd have to do some research, right, about this plant and how what growing conditions it it loves, right? And this one actually has a sticker on it, which I'm not a super big fan of stickers on fruits. I will say. Yeah. Right? But this one does at least tell me one thing about this plant, where this came from. Can everybody see that sticker? This says Peru. I had another one. Okay. one oh, yeah, you have, you have a fruit? Uh, it's not a fruit. Oh, okay. Yes, show, me, show us. <gasps> huh. Cactus, and yes, I have tried to touch it. Doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. I wonder why. Yeah, Sorry, you, you're growing that in your home. How often do you water it? Like I've had it for like a couple of days, but I, like you're supposed to like feel the soil, and like when it's like dry, you water it a little bit. Right now, mine is like super wet, so like I'll wait a little bit. Where do you typically find cactuses in nature? Uh, like, well, on the food chart, it would, well, like, the chart you had, it would probably be, like, a flower or something. Okay, so cactuses definitely have flowers, but where, where do you find cactuses planted? Where in the, the desert? The desert, okay? So oh, we can I thought that was just from cartoons. No, it's true. Cactuses are specifically good at growing in the desert, and apparently... Avocados are specifically good at growing, or some of them at least, are specifically good at growing in Peru. And I don't know that much about Peru's climate or the conditions in Peru, but if I wanted to grow an avocado from its seed, I might have to do a little bit of research about where avocado plants actually grow. 
And do you know why cactuses grow in the desert? Do I know? I why know a bit of it. Tell us. Why do cactuses grow in the desert, Matilda? Um, I don't know like fully, but I know that some cactuses, there's these certain animals in the desert that, since there's actually water in cactuses, that some animals actually drink the water from the cactuses. Wow. Did you know that, Savion? That cactuses store water on the inside? No. And if you're a hungry, thirsty critter out in the desert, which is very hot, super hot, what else? Sand. Waterless, basically. Waterless. What else did you say, Savion? Sand. Sand. So not super great soil. Does that, does this sand, like, sand is not no. black and brown and full of parts of leaves. Sand is really, how would you describe it? Soft. Like tiny, grainy. The thing about the soil and the, and the thing about growing plants is that you have to sort of imagine the conditions that these plants would grow in in the wild, how they thrive. Okay. So I'm hoping what we can do right now, we're going to design a greenhouse. A what? A greenhouse. What is a greenhouse? <laughs> it's like where plants grow in like, it's like outside. It's like, mm. like a little garden. It's not always inside. Okay, so maybe sometimes it's outside, sometimes it's inside. What, Matilda, do you, like, what do you think? Okay, go ahead. Okay. We used to go get our um, fruit from Michigan State. You had to, like, there was a subscription you could get to, like, get fruit or, and, like, vegetables. And we got that for a while. So has anybody, like, Grayson, heard of university or farms giving out these things called farm shares? Or the ability to sort of get food from a little bit closer, maybe a local greenhouse. Yeah, we'll talk about that in, in the next segment, but in this moment, what I hope we can do together is to design a greenhouse. So are we ready for the things that we're gonna write down? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna think about what plants you want to grow and what parts of those plants you actually eat and what parts of those plants you need in order to make a new plan. So imagine what plants you want to grow and what part of it you need in order to grow it. What are the conditions that you'll need to grow it, right? Is it a cactus? Is it gonna be in the desert? Is it, a, is it an avocado tree? You're gonna need it somewhere in Peru-like conditions. Um, and where do you think these plants originally come from? Mine is going to be a cherry tree. Ooh, okay, all right. So that's a teaser, that's a spoiler. And then, um, so you're gonna write down and design your own greenhouse. And you can imagine also greenhouses that you can create in your own house, or you can imagine a greenhouse that you want in the world. And so this will be also a fun problem. Who do you want to eat the things that are in your greenhouse? Who is this food for? Is it for you? Is it for the thirsty animals wandering around the desert? Is it for a whole city? Is it for one family? Your choice. So I'm going to pass it over to the partner teacher and we'll take a break.
let's jump right into sharing our ideas for a greenhouse. So I think, first of all, greenhouses are good because they protect the plants more and give it a more habitable space because if they're just like on the ground, like in Minecraft usually, um, they're unprotected, they can be destroyed quickly. Um, the, it doesn't like, it's up to like chance, whether like it rains, what happens with the sun. So you, but you get to decide and you can do like weekly like stuff. So it actually has a healthy environment. What would be the ideal conditions for the fruits, vegetables, other kinds of fruits or plants that you all want to grow? What are those ideal conditions? Like, for me, what I'd like is, like, you know, like, doesn't go to a factory, doesn't go near, like, any, like, machines. It's just, like, seed and dirt or however it grows. I'm not, like, sure if that's the one way. Like, you grow it and then maybe, like, an hour or like one minute that's probably impossible but to like a day afterwards it's given to someone okay so you're Wash, thinking, probably yeah. nothing happened to it like okay what about if you grew right in your own home no that'd be awesome i have actually some plants back in the back in my backyard that were growing okay, so you've got backyard plants what about even on your windowsill kind of but it's I do. dead Okay, so sometimes windowsill plants die pretty easily, but I have this amazing scientific challenge that I worked with some students to make, and it's about how to grow food on your windowsill using scraps that you probably already have in your kitchen. You don't need to like fly in a blue java banana seed, right, which I learned about recently. Blue java bananas, Daddy. cool looking fruits. Apparently they taste like ice cream. That's what I would grow in my greenhouse is a blue mm -hmm. uh, banana. But what I wanted to show you is this video of this scientific challenge. Hi, I'm Marina. I'm a scientist at BioBest. Welcome to our weekly Explore at Home Science Challenge. Today, I am going to show you how you can grow plants from food scraps you can find at home. This is a cool experiment because it allows you to grow more food from scraps that usually end up in the garbage. If you don't want to eat the food you grow, you can also let these grow into beautiful plants that hang out around your house. Indoor plants can remove pollutants from the air by absorbing them through their leaves and roots, making the air you breathe in your home cleaner. First step, let's find some scraps. I'm going to be looking in my compost bin, but you can use veggie scraps left over from cooking meals in your home. Maybe this week, while someone in your house is cooking, you can sneak parts of the plant they are not using so we can do this experiment together. Step two, preparing our scraps. When we are preparing our food scraps, we want to focus on finding stems. You should ask an adult for help here because you might need to use a knife when trimming your plant scraps. For veggies, like different kinds of lettuce, cabbage, and celery, we want to focus on the bottom of our plant, where all the leaves grow from. But carrot plants stem from the top, not from the bottom. Scallions are easy because usually parts of the roots remain. Once you trim your veggies so that you are left with stems, you have finished the hardest part. Step three is to find a container. You can use glass or plastic containers from your recycling bin or kitchen containers like Tupperware and jars. Once you have your container, you can place your plant in a little bit of water, stick them on a windowsill or somewhere with lots of sunlight, and wait. You can measure their growth after a few days. For bonus growth, you can even transfer them into containers with soil once the roots grow in so that they can absorb nutrients. You can try this with a variety of vegetable scraps like garlic, ginger, and herbs like basil. Throughout the next few days and weeks, record your plant growth and submit your data on our Explore at Home website. I'm excited to see your results. Savion, what plant would you pick to grow? Um, I would pick... What plants are in Fortnite? <laughs> are there uh, any? <laughs> flowers, butterflies, uh, are butterflies plants? No. No, but they're super. No, butterflies are definitely plants. 
What? <laughs> what is this misinformation? Can I show you actually? Maybe butterflies no. are actually really important for plants. Yeah, but but I know. Flowers. I know why. Why are butterflies important for plants? Because um, flowers and such have pollen. Okay. So when the flower, when butterflies go onto it, they usually get the pollen on them. There's something else they do with their mouth that's definitely also important. What is it? It's called a proboscis. Do you want to say it together? A proboscis? Proboscis. Oh and so from when the butterflies slash bees go mm -hmm. around, they drift all this pollen on to new soils or like new flowers and it makes them like better. So if birds and butterflies and even the wind can pollinate plants, right in the video we just watched, those are different kinds of plants. Those are not flowering plants, which we learned about in the last lesson where the flower actually needs to be pollinated in order to bear a fruit. Those parts of the plant that we love to eat, right? So that's, also something to consider in the plants that you want to grow in your greenhouse. And a lot of things that humans eat rely on pollination. So did anybody pick a, a, a plant to grow that was actually fruit bearing or that humans eat? Anybody? Orange. Okay, oranges. Who would you want to eat from your, your greenhouse or from sure. your design? Who? Cherries. You want to eat cherries? Okay, so that's kind of for you. Davion, who would you feed with your greenhouse? Oh. Probably, um, I'd feed my friends. I'd and, feed Charlie. Uh, my family. Yes, family. Family members, if you if you start a small garden on your wind, windowsill, that, it'll make those scallions, especially if you're locked in your apartment, go for much longer. That's what I did. While I was locked in my apartment, every time I would have the scallions, I would just trim the tops off and it kept growing. So you can have like almost, you can create a little garden just for yourself, for your family. And you can imagine solutions to larger problems like Matilda was talking about earlier, industrial foods. You want food to be fresh. If we imagine ways and we start to learn about how, what plants need, the kinds of environments that plants need, they're oftentimes really good environments also for people and bees and birds and bears and, and mushrooms and small soil organisms and worms, right? So I think that you can think about how all of that works together when you're designing your, your, your growing scenarios. And I really loved exploring uh, growing plants and the different parts of plants today with all of you. Is there anything else you wanna ask or questions you have? Thoughts? Um, I learned that there's different types of worms. I didn't really think that. I thought it, there was just a worm. Um, and that was really interesting to me. Thank you. Um, can I go? Yes. I kinda was gonna say the same thing she said, but like, I didn't really know, like, I thought they were just like, well, I knew they were like not night crawlers. I didn't know there was like small baby worms. Tiny worms. Did you, did you know that worms, worm babies, I didn't know this, come out of a sack? The what? mother like, oh. like lays a sack of worm babies and then they all emerge mm -hmm. from the sack. I just learned that from you now. <laughs> You're gonna, <laughs> very good, very good turnaround. All right. So I appreciate everyone's time. I hope that you had a, a, a fun time and we're going to pass off to the partner teacher, the sort of wrap up discussion. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.